Good evening. My name is Jessica Vandenberg. I hold a couple engineering degrees and I find myself working with Indigenous communities. So the topic of exploration can go many, many, many different ways. And I thought I'd take a different angle tonight and talk more on self-exploration. And so this is coming from an entirely different angle than interplanetary exploration or looking underneath our subsurface and talking about my journey of how I come to realize my, how my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical selves uh, work together and fit with my personal beliefs and values, but it also aligns with my engineering mindset and the way of thinking, and how this all contributes to truth and reconciliation. So we are all just people. A person is a function of their genetics, their experiences, their values, and their beliefs, how they were raised, their environment, the community, and the people they surround themselves with. You are here surrounding yourself some, with some very like-minded people, listening to a different sort of things. So I was born, actually, Cynthia Joyce, from two Dene Ta parents. I was born during the 60s scoop, and even though my mother took me home, she chose to put me into the adoption system, and she had hopes for a different path for me. Are folks familiar with the term 60s scoop? All right. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that for those of you who aren't, give the two minute look into the past, because exploration also looks behind us. So for hundreds and hundreds of years ago, um, indigenous peoples lived on Turtle Island, or North America as the settlers called it. Indigenous people were not nomads, were not nomads nor savages, nor impoverished. There was commerce and travel, there was stewardship and inheritances, there was artistry and ceremony, healthcare and politics, justice and peacekeeping. It just looked and felt a little different than how it worked in Europe and Asia and other places in the world. When the world um, across the ocean, though, early in the years, was in search of resources, um, there was search for power through land acquisition and different types of economies were set in motion. So in 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and came to Turtle Island, so it became colonization, a settler's way of being. And so in 1540, the first residential school was established. Zoom ahead through a variety of wars and power struggles through disease and treaty signing to 1867, when Canada became a country, or rather a branch of Britain's domain. Many treaties had already been signed by people who wanted good relations in a good way, but meanwhile, the Indian Act was being drafted. While the US chose to eliminate indigenous people, the only good Indian is a dead Indian, as we've heard in many Westerns, Canada instead chose assimilation, to kill the Indian in the child. And so more residential schools were created and culture was lost. There were horrific acts of physical and verbal, financial, sexual, emotional abuse, and death occurred. The first residential school was in 1540, and the last closed in 1996. My mother went to residential school, but her story is not for me to share. When residential schools didn't work well, the foster and the adoption systems were set in motion in order to help with assimilation, hence the 60s scoop. And so I was born Dene Ta, but I was raised by an incredibly inclusive German family who I'm proud to call my own. I grew up in northern Alberta. My mom immigrated from Germany, and so she was the result of intergenerational trauma from a, company, or from a country that was a direct player in the Holocaust and the World Wars. She had a very, very strong work ethic, sorry, um, but her discipline was harsh, and her story is not for me to tell either. My two brothers and I were raised strict Catholic, and so I feel guilty about everything. <laughs> but I have since studied theology, visited churches and holy sites around the world, I've talked with spiritual leaders and elders and knowledge keepers. And I believe in these seven ideas, the ideas of love and respect, courage and honesty, wisdom, humility, and truth. I know we are made up of mass and energy. I'm a chemical engineer after all. And when we die, our mass returns to the earth, dust to dust. But our energy is converted and joins other energy. And I know we cannot create nor destroy that energy. So it makes sense to me that our energies will interact together, that we interact with our environment around us, with other planet-to-planet -planet interactions through energies and forces. We know that there's positive and negative energy, protons and neutrons and electrons. But we are all just people, 
And when we experience anything, it's our thoughts and feelings and actions and behaviors that we can control consciously and unconsciously that direct our energy. And so there's an interconnectedness between everything. The funny thing is this belief of mine aligns with my birth indigenous culture, what they have known for thousands of years. They align with the medicine wheel teachings. And these vary from nation to nation, how they're applied and how they're interpreted and how they're taught. I have worked in many corporate worlds, and there's a lot of talk right now around stress management and mental health, life balance, work-life balance. And again, this idea of life management and harmony aligns with the medicine wheel teachings, the seven sacred teachings of love and respect, courage and honesty, wisdom, humility, and truth. I find these also are parallel between many religions. In my engineering profession, I'm also legally bound by a code of ethics which speaks to considering others in the environment and how we interact with them, the cause and effect of reactions and decisions that we make, um, sticking to what we know and are trained in, and admitting our errors and failings, and we work in the interest of the public. I see this code in, this, um, in the seven sacred teachings, and it's funny how all these things have come together. Uh, the way I believe, how I act in my professional life, even though I grew up in a non-Indigenous way. I feel I am where I am meant to be. My journey has led me to believe that all of this is part of truth and reconciliation, that everyone can contribute to making headway in small ways every day by being kind and approaching with curiosity and compassion rather than shame, blame, or guilt. And truth and reconciliation is about acknowledging the past and coming together in an inclusive way to find an equitable path forward. It's about exploring the idea of reciprocity. After all, there were two parties on who signed the treaties. We are all treaty people. And this is where my self-exploration has taken me. And so I can only talk to my truths in my journey, but I hope what I have sparked, um, shared sparks, some curiosity and food for thought. And I hope you venture out on your own self-exploration. And I'm proud to say that I have started my own consulting company called Guiding Star Consulting, and I look forward to talking to you more on truth and reconciliation. Thank you.